This is the download from Sounds Profitable, the most important news from this week and why it matters to people in the business of podcasting. I'm Newton Schottelkotty. And I'm Gavin Gaddis. The download is brought to you by Podscribe. Find out more at podscribe.com. This week, podcasting's inertia problem, presidential podcast campaign stops, and Wondery is merchandising their podcast IP. Let's get started. This Wednesday from Tom Webster at Sounds Profitable. When podcasting was first emerging from the primordial ooze of MP3 players and manually transferring files to a device every day, the medium largely attracted audiences who found the techie aspect of the medium cool. Contemporary podcast audiences are more likely to be brought into the medium because of a specific show or a personality with presences elsewhere online. The podcast landscape, built from a large sample of U.S. consumers, asked several questions regarding what makes someone stop listening to a podcast and what they do next. The first bit of data that stands out to Webster is the top reasons selected for why respondents stopped listening to a podcast that used to be part of their regular routine. Three of the top five reasons relate to the quality of the production— This is not unique to podcasting, of course. Television has plenty of examples of audiences dropping off if the quality of the production dips. Yet TV is part of the U.S. social fabric. When respondents were asked why they haven't listened to podcasts recently, the third highest reason is, I got tired of podcasts, with 21% of respondents, up from 16% last year. When asked when they think they'll listen to podcasts again, 43% of respondents said, I don't know. Imagine if that was the case for television where, after dropping off one show, that person simply does not know when they'll ever watch television again. A quote from Webster, quote, Every podcaster has an obligation to every other podcaster to sing the praises of this medium on every show. Let's talk more about how to spend that doom-scrolling boredom time with something that enriches the mind and doesn't turn it into AI-assisted ricotta. Let's talk more about how podcasts enable you to take your weird passions and hobbies into the workplace or the train or the garden, and nobody has to know about it. Let's talk more about how the hosts of our show are friends, and we are there to keep you company. Let's remind people of all the places and contexts of our lives where a podcast could be consumed, specifically listened to, that could make those situations better and richer. Webster calls out to the bigger names in the industry, the celebrities benefiting from podcasting, and pitches a symbiotic future where the biggest names in podcasting also sing the praises of the industry, selling people on the idea of podcasting in general instead of a delivery device for one show. The U.S. presidential election is less than four weeks away, and both candidates are doing their final rounds on media to collect votes. In addition to more traditional old guard media like Kamala Harris's appearance on 60 Minutes, Deadline covered the then-upcoming episode featuring Democrat vice presidential candidate and Minnesota Governor Tim Walz. Former President Donald Trump appeared on Theo Vaughn's This Past Weekend, as well as dropping by Lex Friedman's podcast. Similarly, Kamala Harris has been on a media blitz, appearing on The Late Show with Stephen Colbert, The Howard Stern Show, and as the internet was surprised to find out last week, Call Her Daddy. Both Variety and The Information have covered the appearance on Alex Cooper's flagship show. This Tuesday, Laura Kelly, writing for The Atlantic, interviewed podcast journalist Helen Lewis about the uptick in political attention towards independent podcasts and what they mean for the election. A quote from Lewis. Quote, I'm as guilty as anyone, but we need to stop treating these podcasts as the alternative media when they are absolutely the mainstream these days. The top ones have audiences as big as, if not bigger than, most legacy outlets. If they don't want to hire all the editorial infrastructure that traditional journalism has, such as fact checkers, research assistants, etc., or risk being unpopular by asking difficult questions, that's on them. Joe Rogan renewed his Spotify contract for $250 million. Alex Cooper signed a deal with SiriusXM this year worth $125 million. We should stop treating these mega podcasts like mom and pop outfits competing with chain stores. They're behemoths. End quote. Last Thursday from Lucia Moses at Business Insider. Amazon's Wondery is getting into the podcast merchandising game in a big way, including new Wow in the World branded toys currently hitting store shelves. New toys and science kits manufactured by Thames and Cosmos, as well as Goliath, are branded after the Tinkercast children's series. In addition to the science kits, new stories are being published for the Tony's Audio Story Box, 
a speaker that plays licensed audio tied to proximity of associated purchased figurines. Wondry's move into merch for audio properties comes three years after onboarding Nicole Blake, one of the architects of developing Harry Potter's merchandising empire at Warner Bros. Blake tells Business Insider the plan is to bring a Hollywood-style approach to audio franchises, with full consumer product lines as well as other touch points, i.e. books and live events. Another example from this week, longtime mall favorite Spencer's has announced a collaboration with Wondry, manifesting as a new Halloween-y product line themed after the true crime podcast Morbid, including Morbid wearable merch identifying the wearer as a weirdo, a long-running pet name for fans of the show. Finally, it's time for our quick hits. These are articles that didn't quite make the cut for today's episode, but are worth including in your weekend reading. This week, questions to Spotify's Maya Prahovnik. Pod News editor James Cridlin sat down with Spotify VP of Podcast Product, in which she discusses video's role in podcasting and reaffirms Spotify's commitment to keeping RSS feeds. Just Add Audio, the data behind audio's impact on your campaigns, a new study from SiriusXM looking into how audio ads contribute to larger campaigns. Will the Smartless podcast be the biggest role of their careers by Sridhar Papu, a look back at the growth of the Smartless podcast and the interrelationship of the three celebrity hosts. Seven Lessons from a Year of Paywalled Podcasts at The Economist by Esther Kaiser Thorpe. After The Economist took all of their podcasts, except The Intelligence, behind a paywall, Media Voices takes a look at what has worked over the past year. And finally, Spain is a key market for podcast listening. The source for this one is in Spanish. Audible celebrates its fourth anniversary in Spain with a new study on Spain's podcast listening population conducted by Nielsen IQ. And that was the download brought to you by Sounds Profitable. I know we went through today's stories fast, so be sure to check out the links to every article mentioned right in your podcast listening app or on the download section of soundsprofitable.com. And thank you for sticking with us as we bring you the top stories you might have missed from the past week. I'm Newton Shabakati. And I'm Gavin Gaddis. Our producers are myself, Newton Shabakati, Brian Barletta, and Tom Webster. Special thanks to Spreaker for hosting the download, and thanks to you for joining us. Robot? Download complete.